welcome to Making a House a Home with myself, Sena Araji, and our guest, Fahima Mohammed, a qualified life coach and an NLP practitioner. Assalamu alaikum, alaykum Fahima. Alaykum salam. Now, today we're going to be discussing mut'a. And I know it's a bit of a taboo subject, but we're just going to discuss a bit, of a, a bit about the issue sometimes that arises with mut'a. Yeah. And maybe from a female perspective, how, how people see it and, and, and to divulge into it a bit. Could you start by Well, firstly, it? we talk about mut'a and its translation is temporary marriage. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and yes, it is a very controversial topic. Um, and a lot of the times it's not discussed the way it should be discussed because people find it, you know, difficult to digest its meaning and you know what it represents and you know how people practice it so it's important for us to understand that the religion of Islam caters for every aspect of life and this topic may not have been addressed in the past as much but it is opening up a lot more uh, and for many reasons because you know now we're becoming more self-expressive and you know we we are educating our children and ourselves with everything in life and you know these are one of the areas that is quite important mm -hmm. when people are mixing and we're living in today's day and age and societies and countries that are you know modern western whatever it may be and our religion is quite modern it's yeah. actually you know current and it's fast moving and people need to keep up to that actually and it's not about culture our religion is you know current mm -hmm. so in chapter 4, verse 24 of the Quran in Surah Al-Nisa, it is not just about women discussing marriages within Islam. Um, it's basically many issues about, you know, who you are allowed to marry. Yeah. And, you know, um, if widows were left alone and divorced and, you know, the time set for them and, you know, things like even um, Mahar, the dowry, mm -hmm. and basically all these circumstances, you know, that, you know, inheritance and basically... Um, who you're allowed to marry and in that particular verse 24 it tells us that men can marry and muta is very clear in a sense that uh, the Quran says as for those who give you pleasure for a certain time then give them their dowry as allocated mm -hmm. and the old word used for muta is is different we say muta now but the word was used was in is timta. Yeah. So basically, um, when people say it's not permissible, it doesn't validate even in this day and age, it's not necessarily correct because it's clearly stated it is, you know, permissible. And the only time um, that it was forbidden was from the second Khalifa, Umar ibn Khattab. Yeah. And it wasn't our Prophet, peace be upon him and his family, that actually, you know, eradicated this rule mm. so as the Shia we still continue with you know the belief and the understanding that muta is even up till this day and age allowed definitely yeah. thing is though um, there is disagreement as to how people use it and argue uh, many times that it's actually um, it actually creates more issues yeah and to be fair, to a certain extent, it can be. I come with, um, I have been approached by a lot of people complaining about, you know, muta has destroyed my life and or my marriage or whatever it may be. But remember, there are very, very strict rules and regulations to this act. Mm -hmm. And if one was to perform it with good intention, with good, you know, awareness of what it is, that it entails, yeah. then there isn't really an issue. And it's not just from the male's perspective, it's also from the women's perspective. Yeah. Uh, the reason why I chose this topic is because it's not just the responsibility of the man. I want women to also understand that when you're entering this and a man promises you that they're gonna come to you with the temporary marriage and you're happy to do that, it is temporary, but a lot of the time there is a misconception that women feel that it actually is going to lead to something longer mm. and when it doesn't then the whole idea of it is wrong yeah it's very common actually it's I've very common and you got to you got to admit that yeah. and it's no one's fault that if it's set for a period of time if it doesn't work out it doesn't work and if you want to end you got to end mm -hmm. and you know be aware and if you think that that man or that you know has promised you that it is going to 
you know, be permanent, then bring someone involved to say, you know, okay, maybe not discuss what the issues are particular as to your act with Muta, because people even just do it just to go out. It doesn't have to be to the any extent physically mm -hmm. that most people assume that it is. It's basically halal, so men and a, a man and a, a woman can actually, you know, meet together, sit together, talk together without having, you know, uh, someone like a maharam with them. Yeah. So it could just only be for that. But if you prefer, if you want to do more, whatever it is, that's your own discretion. So if that man is promising you permanent marriage and you just go there blindly without even telling somebody that's going to actually hold him accountable, because that's also going to test his intention. So don't, you know, just be blindsided. You're putting yourself in a, a, you, in a, a risky situation. Exactly. In a vulnerable exactly. Situation. And I'm not trying to blame even that because yeah. obviously someone's words should be, you know, they have to hold integrity. But Especially if they're a mu'min and they, they're a follower of Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam, you would expect them to have the akhlaq and the mannerism of Ahlul Bayt. But in life, even in a permanent marriage, when yeah. there is permanent marriage and there's intention from both parties to be lifelong partners and stick by each other no matter what, those things end up in separation and divorce. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. So let's just be real that things do not work out sometimes over time for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that, you know, these reasons shouldn't be accounted, but I'm just saying you need to be aware. Nothing is really forever, to be honest. Yeah. And we can disregard even marriage as an institution, you know, because, you know, these things now are more and more ending up in divorce, but we're not doing that. And for Mut'a, you know, it is a period that he's been set for both of you. For People that have, um, if they are young and they still have a guardianship, then yes, the adults who's taking care of them need to be informed. Yeah, they have to have permission, consent. But a lot the of the father. girls nowadays, unfortunately, they're not doing it and following the right rules. Mm -hmm. So they're getting themselves in these situations and they've taken on a big responsibility of entering into something like this without understanding and awareness. And then it becomes an issue of that instead of you being knowledgeable about it yeah. and being smarter about making these decisions so that you can take on the responsibility whichever way it ends up and you have to know it's going to come or if it doesn't come you are prepared for it don't just think that these things are you know you like someone it's halal and oh no they've you know disregarded my feelings now you promised me something it's not working out you left me and you know the whole idea of this is is horrible and at the same time there are men who will also use this to say, well, this is a good way of me experimenting and doing what I need to do, like in the English and the Western world of, you know, dating and just seeing who I want to be with so that I can continuously, you know, live my life freely using mut'a. Mm. Again, that is not necessarily the right way to move forward. They may have several, you know, interactions in that way because things haven't worked out. That is normal. Mm -hmm. So you can't just judge it too uh, without knowing the reasons. I don't ever see things on the surface. If someone comes to me with a complaint. You've got to go deeper. You've got to know, okay, they've been in many of these temporary marriages, but what is the reason behind it? Maybe they genuinely didn't find the right spouse. Maybe they genuinely didn't find themselves in a position where they could settle with one temporarily for a long period of time. Yeah. It could be for many reasons. So don't judge even and put a man down because that also you know, it's bad for their reputation to get married in the future because these women are not getting what they want and then they're talking bad about them in that way. And at the same time, women are being, you know, um, put in a vulnerable position because they're having bad experiences about it because they're not aware of the, the situation that it might, you know, end and it will not end in permanent marriage. Yeah. These things need to be clear. And there's a set dowry. And if you are a woman who is maybe a little bit older, who is looking after themselves, a lot of the times when they are widow or divorced, and there are cases where women that are much older and, you know, they find attractiveness with someone who's a lot younger. And these things do and can work. And there are cases where they've lasted for years with that person in Muta'a mm -hmm. because they don't want it to involve their children or the rest of their family. And it's just an easier way for them to live in a halal environment. It's reducing the sin. It's reducing the That's sin. Allah makes it easy for us. And to. they can live life because we mm. cannot disregard that, you know, we are humans, we, we have desires and needs, and we want to, you know, live in a way that is fulfilling ourselves with, you know, the permission mm. that is, you know, brought upon us. Yeah. You know, doing it in a lawful way. Exactly, yeah. And when you bring it down in a simple terms like that, and yes, you know, people 
you know, will have many relationships. People have relationships, you know, widely and would love to be in a long-term permanent relationship. But nowadays, even society and even the parents are delaying their children to get married because it's not what they expect their child to choose. So what do these, you know, do young do? adults do as yeah. well over years where they, you know, from like, I know, the 25, even now 30-year-old men and women are not getting married. Mm. I know what as being used in many beneficial ways. One example is, for example, when two people want to get married and with yes. the permission of, of both parents, they have a period where they can go out to get to know one another, like a yes. like before they get like engaged. An engagement. Yeah, or because even before that, yes. What is so common, what I'm seeing so common is people are getting engaged and within a month or two you're hearing that that's it, the engagement's off. And it's, it's an actual wedding that they've actually placed upon themselves as well, and that's actual divorce. And they're getting mm. a proper divorce through the aqad because that's when they perform the actual marital nikah. Yeah. And that is actually more detrimental to them. So they become a divorcee. They at that become time. exactly a labeling in that sense, and also the divorce is must, most hated lawful act in Islam. Yes. Okay. So it prevents that too. So obviously, it's safeguarding that. But mm. yes, people can use and take advantage, but that could be seen and done for anything. Very true. We can't we can't kind of focus on the few and yeah. ruin it for the many. No one, to make it clear, no one has to have a mut'ah. It's no. of, it's by choice if exactly. it's convenient for you in your circumstance exactly. and lifestyle. It is not promoted. No. In fact, it is not something that is even recommended. Exactly. Yes. But if but it's you, there, it's there for those who need it and will benefit if they follow it yes. in the right way. Yes. So I think people need to be clear yes. that it's not there as um, a halal boyfriend girlfriend, as people say, yes. and from other schools of thought who will attack us mm -hmm. because of it. But them themselves have their own form of temporary marriage, exactly. which no one knows. Called differently. It's just called a different name. Yes. So we just need to be clear that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala makes it easy for us. He doesn't wish Absolutely. hardship yes. upon us. Yes. And so the youth have such a difficult time. And we're not promoting much out here. We're just discussing about, you know, Absolutely. the pros and cons for some people. Yes, and, and the challenges faced if you are entering it. Exactly. Yes. So just be very, very cautious and aware of what you're getting yourself into. And at the end, don't complain if you weren't too sure about the situation. Be 100% sure. You have to be more, more sure and more, yes. you know, aware in mut'a than you would even in a permanent marriage. Because, you know, a lot of risk is in mut'a. Mm -hmm especially for the women with pregnancy and you know you having that yes the man is responsible but if that permanent marriage was only permanent and there wasn't anything in the future then you are left by yourself even with the responsibility they has, that he has to take and the stigma attached around it that you are you know obviously someone who was not married because yeah. people not everyone recognizes this and you you know had that mm -hmm. so these are the risks involved and of course in modern day yes we have whatever you know we have to protect ourselves but even th things do happen so you need to think a hundred times before you actually enter into something like this to be ready for it mm -hmm. and to take the adverse effects of it yes. because there are many there are many and I think it only suits the very very few and for married men it is allowed according to certain maraja but also some say you have to seek the permission of your wife but even in mut'a or in permanent marriage mm -hmm. there is the agreement between the two where you can say well I don't want you to do mut'ah and that could be agreed by the Sayyid when you're entering mut'ah between the two of you yeah. or between the Sayyid when it's in permanent marriage. Even a discussion between spouses, like if you, if you as a wife or a husband, well, it, uh, as a wife are concerned that your husband wants to have a temporary marriage, I'm sure that in the day and age, if you have a good relationship, if you were to express actually, you know what, I'm not too comfortable some men, I'm not saying all, I'm so sure some men will be like, you know what, I need to respect my wife, she's not comfortable with that, and maybe I will just listen to her this time. Sometimes that can happen. When but it's, it's interesting you said that because actually, you know, uh, a lot of the scholars do say if, if muta for a married man is going to affect and destroy your first marriage, mm -hmm. then you most definitely do not do it. Mm -hmm. Even if you, met, if you don't, uh, you know, actually speak about it to your wife, 
but you in that relationship you know how they feel you know these things are you know always discussed to a certain extent yeah. and you know how your wife feels and you know what their you know the slide comments may be that will indicate that if you haven't had that actual deep conversation and if that was to actually you know damage your first marriage then it is wrong for you because your permanent marriage is the most important and that is your holding your stability half your religion Mm -hmm. And it's and there's reasons like if your wife cannot perform in a particular way, if she's ill, if you are away for a, a, you know, a, long, period a, a long, long period of time and yeah. continuous, and you know there's no way of it, you know, ever affecting your actual, you know, permanent marriage. Yeah. Then, which is also an, a, another risk. We're saying this because we this is the rules. This is not my rules. This is the rules yeah. from the Quran. But at the same time, you know you as humans and in this day and age knowing how things can be spread knowing how people are so open and who you're going to enter that with you know has to be of trustworthiness because it's discretionary most of the time it's no one knows about it it's only between the two people that are in that relationship and also when you're choosing someone to do muta with a lot of the time when you were saying as well earlier that it's easy because men will think or women will think that you know it's an it's a way of dating but the women you choose still have to be women of faith, mm -hmm. not someone that, you know, is easily, um, you know, available for this sort of thing. And how would you uh, even gather that? But if you're going to enter the mut'ah, if they don't question you about it, if they're not interested in you actually performing the mut'ah, then that is an indication is that woman is not necessarily off, you know, mm -hmm. that sort of stature yeah. for you to enter into that sort of relationship. Yeah. So, you know, these things has to be considered. Mm -hmm. And, you know, your body, your soul is, is pure in most instances. So whatever you decide to perform in order to continue with that in a halal way and who you're choosing is of vital essence. It does, you know, affect our life, like the foods we eat, like the friends we choose and the actions we take. Mm. So do not take it lightly. It's not, it's not a joke, it's something serious. It's definitely serious. not and a joke. And for those people who have suffered f with negative um, uh, you know, uh, instances with using the, the mut'ah, I mean, I would say leave it with Allah. Allah can see yeah. all things. Allah is the judge. Absolutely. And if someone goes into something with the wrong intention, Allah will judge them and Allah will ha ha yes. hold them accountable. You just do what is right and uh, in a God-fearing way and leave everything else to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Absolutely. at the end of the day, we are all going to be in our own grave. We're all going to be judged. Alone. Alone. Mm -hmm. Our body parts will be speaking and saying, Exactly. You know, this is what you did. This is what you did. And so leave it like that. If they want to be bad, leave it. Yes. Just distance yourself. Don't allow it to affect your mental, um, you know, uh, wisdom. Ability, wisdom, yeah. About the whole idea of this. Exactly. Yeah. Like I said. Yeah. Um, Islam addresses everything and has answers for everything and this is one of the answers to a lot of issues that you know young single or older mm -hmm. you know single men and women are faced with yeah you know we are not from a different sect or background or you know religion that even takes away that element that we're not allowed to be in that sort of way you know, we have our natural desires. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us that and we can do it with strict rules and regulations and this is part of it. Mm -hmm. So educate yourself and be aware. Don't just think, oh, you know, this is like, you know, a new solution to modern day, you know, being with somebody openly and have also high expectations and also, you know, judge people if they are entering it more than once because their own relationship is their own. Even if you see them in that particular way, relationships are difficult. I coach relationships for relationships and it's very complicated. So, you know, people don't get along because they don't know what they're looking for. They don't understand the meaning of it. And not to say that's an excuse for them to keep going and jumping from one relationship into the other. But at the same time, people break up a lot. So don't put yourself in a situation of much where you're also going to deny yourself of meeting and finding that one right person. Yeah. This can actually, you know, delay real marriage. And also you will, you know, lose that essence of being with that one person and enjoying and building something which is special. So there's a lot to consider.
there's a lot to consider. This is not here, again, like you said, to promote it mm -hmm. or to, not, uh, to say it's really bad. It has its place. Yeah. That's it. It has its place. And you as an individual need to know if you are thinking about it, does it actually, you know, validate you doing it? It might be a right, but not every right needs to be acted upon. Is it needed? Is it necessary? Yes. Just think we about... We need to hold back as well. Yeah, just we need to have more constraint. We need to have more patience. Yeah. Because it's very easy to take on these things and say, what well, is my right? And yeah, it's halal and whatever. Mm -hmm. And that attitude alone will get you into trouble. Exactly. And you might be faced with something you're not prepared for. That's the other thing, because it is a very serious. It's marriage, temporary or not. It is marriage, it is commitment, it is responsibility, it's a promise. Mm. Thank you very much, Fahima. And uh, again, fantastic discussion that we've just had about this kind of uh, very controversial subject. Um, but inshallah, hopefully we didn't touch on anything too touchy for our viewers. Um, but like you said, we just want to make uh, raise awareness and so everyone is uh, understanding the difficulties and challenges some people do have and also the benefits that we can also have from such thing. Um, unfortunately, we do need to go on a break, but we will come back uh, answering some of the viewers' questions and inshallah, we'll see you soon. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to the second part of Making a House a Home where we've been discussing uh, mut'a, temporary marriage. Um, we're going to take some questions from our viewers about the topic. Um, if Fahim, if you could answer for us, sure. please. Thank you. So the first viewer is um, Hamid, and his question is, can you explain when is mut'a required and when should it be avoided? We did touch up on this a Yes, bit we before. did. Um, it's never really a requirement, mm. I would say, because each individual should really, you know, wait for that permanent marriage but like I said there are circumstances which differ between individuals where they cannot cons you know basically wait for years because marriage is not coming to them yeah. or they've actually been divorced and it's hard to get married again and they don't want to you know have their kids just lives disrupted with somebody else there or their families and relatives do not approve of them getting married mm -hmm. you know there's very many circumstances like that that they don't want especially the daughters to remarry it's okay for the man to be married again and start fresh but the woman should be you know looking out for their children and stay at home and you know just their whole life is like that mm -hmm. and not to remarry or divorce you know I'm sorry widowers so um, it's not necessarily when it is right because I would not promote this at all, mm -hmm. but if you feel you have the need for that and you really seriously want to go for that particular way of being, then I would suggest you follow what the rules entail and you've got to be a responsible adult to be able to take that upon your head, knowing that even if you know there's dowry and you're careful and whatever is, what are the worst case scenarios and put yourself in that situation that you can actually handle it. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I think when it's not necessary is also the other issue. It's you can't say because it's something that's permissible, and you've got to weigh out each circumstances individually. Um, p parents nowadays even you know advise their young children, especially boys, that they can actually you know enter into what are then actually having to sin, yeah. because the mixing and mingling is so common and widespread that it, that's actually acceptable more than them having to actually have a meaningful, you know, responsible relationship if that was to happen. Mm. And I don't mean just like, you know, hanging out with each other. I mean, you know, people are actually having relationships yeah. openly. It's and no one's, no one's actually discussing that and they think it's okay because, mm. uh, you know, it's because, you know, and mut'a on the other hand is something that all oh, people just hate because it's being uh, misused and abused and whatever people come up with as excuses, but it's halal at least. Yeah, it's better than your child going yeah. out there and mingling with other people and doing and committing sin. Yes. Because ultimately, like we said, it's reducing sin. It's making sure your child does not sin or that the person who wants to do it doesn't sin. Yeah. So really, if they are trying to go through the steps and they feel like they're going to sin, it's actually a good thing to think mm -hmm. of because they're considering Allah. They're trying to find a way that they're able to manage themselves and make it halal. And it's not even easy, as people think, to even mm -hmm. enter into mut'ah because, you know, you want to have that trust with somebody. You want it to never be spoken about. You want it to also be where, you know, 
it will end in a way where it's not going to you know affect you and if you're having those relationships um, it can actually have an impact on your permanent relationship so you know if you put yourself in any situation especially something like this you've got to really think about it deeply and outweigh the situation because a lot of young people generally they want permanent marriages and they think doing this will lead to it but not both parties think that way yeah. So you have to be aware of the other person's intentions too fully, not just from their words, but their actions. We need to be very smart about entering into anything, let alone something like this. And actually to avoid it is actually a lot better. Yeah, exactly. I mean, what I would probably, something that comes to mind for me is go and speak to your local Hussein Yale Center, the lecturer, that, that they're someone that you listen to. Go and have a conversation with them. Maybe some play, some centers do Muslim, uh, not dating, but they have certain workshops Meetings, where yeah. you can meet other people mm -hmm. and actually have a permanent marriage. See if that's a better approach for you. Yeah, Don't try enter. harder for the permanent, basically. Yes, exactly. A lot of people are giving up just because it doesn't work or it's taking long. Or they feel it's too difficult. And this, again, I said before, is more like a distraction to delay the actual permanent mm -hmm. marriage. Yeah. You know, so have patience and, you know, and do seek much more attention to getting the permanent marriage and do it in that way is going to actually help you not even have this issue to address in the first exactly, place yeah, because exactly. there's so many avenues if you mm -hmm. think that you've tried one way and it hasn't worked people give up but there's 10 other ways that you can look at mm -hmm. so try those 10 other ways first for a permanent marriage then even having to consider the muta. Exactly. Thank you so much for that. That's, that's a great way to explain that. Um, our next viewer is um, Sarah. And the question is, a lot of my friends hate the idea of muta as it is used as an easy option for young men to have many relationships, however, and whenever they want, and actually hurt a lot of girls in the process. So how can this act be permissible and shouldn't it be avoided? So yes, this is also a very common question that I've heard from a lot of I get a lot of complaints as well um, from young girls and women because they feel that they've been um, used or, you know, misinterpreting, you know, what their intentions were and they've come with, you know, intentions of mut'a for actual boys have been saying that it's going to be permanent and it doesn't end up like that. But you have to be knowing that if they want permanent, they'll come for permanent. Mm -hmm. If they want mut'a, they want mut'a and it is temporary. It's simple as that. Mm. even if they say something different. So you are entering into temporary and it is temporary. And that's just the way it is. Or question them and say, well, why don't we just do permanent now? That's what I mean. That's exactly what I mean. Yeah. So, you know, y you have to be, you know, much more aware and smart about what you're doing in life. And your choices are important. Mm. Even if you feel the need for something really a lot, by you being smarter, you will protect yourself. And you need to protect yourself. But then on the other hand, don't just have this perception of, you know, you hear a few stories and that's it, that's everyone. Because we can do that for everything as well. To say that, you know, we've heard a few stories and, you know, that sort of, you know, group of people are bad for doing certain things because that's what it is. Mm -hmm. There's always the minority that gives a bad name, just like even in our religion. It doesn't mean that we actually represent that doesn't mean Muta actually represents that. And like I said before, you know, those situations are spoken about badly when it ends badly. Mm. But it doesn't mean there wasn't a wonderful relationship to begin with and start off with and, you know, things just didn't work out. So don't just be so blinded to just, you know, um, label somebody or the actual, you know, act of Muta being so horrible because you hear maybe 10 cases, but actually there are cases that are I know of personally mm. that it really works it's really healthy and that's the only option they actually have. And we both all, sides are happy. Yeah, and we all would ideally mm -hmm. love to be in a permanent long-term marriage because like I said, permanent doesn't even mean long-term anymore nowadays. Exactly. Okay? With the divorce so, rates Exactly. Up high, yeah. And you know, it doesn't even last even through the honeymoon period, mm. most cases. So there's a lot of young getting divorced, you know, after six months, after even, you know, a couple of... Even less of, than that. I've heard of that? literally two months after nikah they've, exactly. they've been divorced. So, yeah. so I would not scrutinize anything unless you yourself know that situation inside out and even if the girl's crying even if she's really hurt that's for any relationship that's going to happen mm -hmm. doesn't mean that muta is bad we don't know the real story behind it but it is temporary and it is going to come to an end yes, so sir. take that into consideration and however it ends it's going to end 
Exactly. Don't enter it if you don't want it to end. Mm -hmm. Don't go into it. And don't, you know, talk bad about something that you hear a few bad people or people that you're not sure even if they're bad or not that have so-called mis yes, yeah. misused it. It doesn't yeah. work like that. Okay, that, that's really great, Fahima. Inshallah, that helps um, the viewer with that query. Um, the next uh, viewer we have is uh, Anun, and the question is, what safety measures and precautions that should be considered if one decides to perform would act? You have kind of mentioned this about a little bit. There's the, the mental, the physical, mm -hmm. the, the knowledge, awareness. It's so much. It's yeah. so much. It's, and don't just think that just because you know the rules and that's what it entails, because in today's society, there's a lot more that needs to be added upon those rules. You know, you've got to consider the other person's feelings. You've got to consider the other person's intentions. You've got to consider even the physical, you know, aspect of it. You know, um, the medical, whatever it may be, that mm -hmm. mental state of that person, the impact of entering into something like this, because attachment is going to be involved, as much as you won't want it to be. You know, whether it's from one or the other, uh, men are more logical thinkers, yes, and they might have less emotion. But regardless, you're entering something which is actually quite special. It is, it can be physical, it doesn't have to be, but most of the time, you know, just knowing that you're spending so much time with that person, there is a growing concern that if it's going to come to an end, how are you going to deal with that? And would you put yourself in that situation? And if you do, not very hu many humans can actually get themselves out of it healthily. That's with mm -hmm. anything that's normal, let alone something like this. So, um, again, you're putting yourself into a lot of risk to take into, and the precautions. I always say prevention is better than cure, you know. Mm. Um, so the same time is, um, but if you are going to enter it, there's a lot. You are taking on someone else, uh, someone else as your responsibility, um, man or woman, you know, for that mental and emotional attachment, affection, you know, feeling or whatever it may be. Even if you'd hardly meet, and it was for only one particular thing or whatever it may be, it it's still something very, very. You know, you know, it's very attachment, I would say, is dangerous with something like Mut'a because you feel that also it's going to end and you mm -hmm. might give more or you might give too little. Mm. There's so many things, so many things. And who you're entering into with, because a lot of the times when you're entering into a permanent marriage, you do more research, you know the person's family, you know the background you have, and you might not do all that necessary research when you're entering into the mut'a. So you don't know what you're getting into with that the person. families meet, they get to know each other as well. Whatever so, it may be, but yeah. you're not doing all of that research on that person. Mm. You don't know them that well even. And if you do, um, that could also be adverse effects of that. You know, because you do know them that well. So I, I just think that a lot of the times when you're entering into something like this, um, I think, again, try for permanent. Try as much as Strive you can for, permanent. for permanent marriage and, you know, bring yourself into having the intentions mm -hmm. and, you know, do the prayer and there's certain surah and ayahs and, you know, things that you can read to do to get you that permanent marriage because that's your safety net. That's, you know, protection. That's long term, you know, in essence. And that's what's going to actually build you to the next stage and level that you really desire. Again, temporary mm -hmm. is because it is to fill in a space, whereas you want to, you know, you want to fill the whole room. Exactly, yeah. And I think um, if you have a different way of looking at it, you might actually think twice into entering it. Thank you, Fahima, for that. Inshallah, that really helps the viewer with the concerns they've raised. The next viewer we have is Hussein. And his question is, as a man, this is my right, so how can I express this to my wife where she is willing to accept me having a temporary wife and be okay with it? <laughs> oh, this is um, a bit of a sensitive question. Well, firstly, like we said before, even if it's your right, it doesn't necessarily mean that you need to go and, you know, perform that right. And again, you know, anything that's going to damage your first marriage, you mm -hmm. need to consider that first because that's the most important thing it's is your priority. actual your priority absolutely mm. and you know it's something temporary it's something that yes people have the desire they want to taste a candy that's different in a store but at the same time you know the main you know responsibility and commitment is your wife 
and um, if you want her to agree, you cannot have you can have an influence to have her agree if whatever your reasons may be, which are genuine. But if she doesn't agree, she doesn't agree, and you have to accept that. You know, again, don't look at Mut'a as my right and I have to do this. If there's genuine reasons for you wanting to do that while you're married, then that needs to be expressed properly. And sometimes sitting in front of someone um, who is of authority, if it's when it's, you know, con you know, it's contradiction with the result and seeking you know, a knowledgeable person's advice, you know, because in case the situation is very, you know, something where he cannot control and you know the wife is not giving him what he desires or mm -hmm. needs that he feels he has to then you know she needs to be made understood about that if that has to be done but at the same time when there's real love and affection and feeling for somebody you know would you really want to upset them and hurt them just for your right which you know is not even really necessary Exactly, and you have to think. I know that the laws are different for f women and men. Yes. But a lot of women that I know, probably including myself, my mind would think, "Well, oh, that's kind of selfish of a man to have that." To have that, unless it's there is an that's actual need, like you the reason said. or the reason for it. But yeah. if it's just for the fact that you said because I would like to try some new candy, I don't think me personally, and I know a lot of women else, I don't think we would find that a okay kind of yeah you need to know how to approach reason. these things and obviously there's something deeper into that relationship yeah. which i would like to get into to say well you know if there's something missing in that way then we can actually work at it where you can get what you need from your current wife mm. you know if if it is you know uh, you know work on, okay. the, mar on the marriage on the have, actual like marriage said, and yeah. build on it yes over time people change and their desires and whatever their needs do change but you know people change and they can grow together differently and have a different love and have a different relationship you know mentally physically whichever way it can be and um, foundation is your real marriage work and build on that and if you're gonna create rocks and you know cracks into it then nothing else even afterwards temporary is actually gonna work for exactly. you exactly it, it might make the the woman feel like she's not that great she isn't that beautiful she isn't that special it might make, make her emotional um, mentality I don't know it might make her feel a bit vulnerable or a bit scared or like as that if he she's might not good she enough. might lose him as well yes, yes so because you are again entering into something which is quite you know attachment emotional you know physical and you know having to share the time even with somebody else you know it takes away time from you know your own marriage exactly yeah. there's a lot of things to consider um, don't just think that I have to do something and it's halal and it's allowed that I should do it. You always need to consider somebody else. They're dependent on you. Mm -hmm. You know, you are responsible for your spouse mm -hmm. and not just, you know, financially and taking care. Their mental state is also very vital. Exactly. And you both need to come to some sort of agreement or compromise or some sort of understanding. And if it doesn't even come to where you both agree, give it more time. Look at other options where you still can be together, fulfilling each other in every way that n that's needed, where you don't need anything outside it. Mm. Your home is what you need to build strong first. Um, anything outside that comes in, it will cause a little bit of destruction, you know, jealousy. It's just human nature. Not everyone can handle this and put up with it yeah. normally, um, let alone when you're with someone that you love and, you know, a permanent marriage is you only for them and them only for you. That institute is special. Mm -hmm. And what you give to each other, you know, people want that because it is only between the two of you and you're taking that away. Exactly. So understand it even from that point of view, because a lot of the time, maybe men might not see it like that because for them, it's maybe just physical or it may be just something that is of convenience. But the impact on that for somebody else or even themselves, if they don't recognize it, it can actually lead to something a lot more toxic. Exactly. And, and there are many things that you, you have the right to you have the right to marry more than one wife, but it doesn't mean that you need to mm -hmm. or that you have to or do you that. Can cope. <laughs> you can't exactly. necessarily it's cope. Not just because it's permissible for you yeah. to do so, it do so. It doesn't mean that you need to do it. It's there if you need it, if you require it, but it's not wajib upon you to do it. Absolutely not. So I think people need to understand that. That If they can't get to grips with the Islamic factor of it, then I would always come back. That's why the whole show is to bring the modern day psychology with mm. Islam, because we are living in this day and age. 
and even you know psychologically and mentally and you know whichever way you're looking at it um, it's not necessarily normal and healthy to be in those sort of relationships it's very rare that it works I'm not saying it doesn't work but it's very rare that it works so you're taking a, a massive amount of risk when you're married to enter into something like that to not have it some sort of crack and damage to your actual original marriage whether they know it or not um, so you need to be very very careful and for people that are single and they want to do it again you know try more for the permanent marriage try and work harder do whatever you need to take and with that work and you know effort you will get what you really desire because mm -hmm. that is what the real desire really is to be honest yeah, and sure. you know inshallah you know I hope that you know this message is there to just bring awareness not to say it is or it shouldn't be or you know it's good or bad it is there it is halal there are certain you know times where it can be of use and there are examples of both but mm. don't be so you know small minded about it or narrow minded or even tunnel vision about it because for each individual it does and it can serve a purpose and for others it will cause damage Exactly. So take that into consideration. Inshallah. Thank you so much for that, Fahima. And uh, unfortunately, we are going to come to an end of the show. Um, and I know it has been quite a sensitive topic. And inshallah, we haven't offended any of our viewers. But it is a reality. Mm -hmm. This is what is going on on a day-to-day -day basis. And we just want to highlight for the viewers so that they are aware of, of what's going on, what the concerns are. And inshallah, hopefully, you know, voice your opinion. If you're concerned about an issue, speak up about it, mention it. Don't um, conceal it because it, this is life. We yes. need it to be out there. We need people to be aware of what is permissible, what isn't permissible, when it's needed, when it's not needed. So inshallah, hopefully um, the discussion has benefited the viewers. Um, and unfortunately, we're going to come to an end. Uh, but inshallah, we'll see you again for another episode of Making a House a Home. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.